This is the last day of 2025. Your phone, your laptop, and the tools that you're working with every single day, they are all quietly running AI models, millions of times more capable than anything you grew up with. And yet, this is still the tutorial level because some of the people building these systems, the ones who understand their true potential, all of them are pointing to one year as the real turning point. Not 2030, not someday, but 2026. You believe it will be smarter than all humans? I, I believe it will reach that level, that it will be smarter than most or all humans in most or all ways. In order to understand why 2026 matters, we have to rewind. In the 50s and 60s, AI was just an idea more than a technology. Researchers were playing with logic, symbol manipulation, and early neural networks, trying to get machines to think. But the hardware was weak, the data was tiny, we only had a dream that was much bigger than the code. Then, for decades, AI lived in cycles. Hype, disappointment, winter. These systems could actually play chess or recognize simple patterns, but they were very fragile, just a narrow tool for saving narrow problems. To find out how good a game of chess a machine might play, Mr. Bernstein and his collaborators prepared a chess playing program for the IBM 704. On the chessboard itself, the moves are made by Mr. Bernstein for both players. As he makes a move, he communicates it to the machine. The machine prints out the position of all the pieces, its own and its opponents, to correspond with the chessboard on every move. Everything changed when neural networks met massive datasets and modern GPUs. Suddenly, around 2010, models started to hear and see. Image recognition, speech recognition, translation. AI was not just solving puzzles anymore, it was decoding reality. But the real cultural explosion came when the machines learned to talk. Fast forward 2022, ChatGPT went public. For most people, this was the first time that AI felt, I would say, alive. You typed a question and something on the other side of the screen answered, fluidly, naturally, with context and memory. From that moment on, everything that followed was built on the same foundation. Large language models as the operating system of AI. They started writing code, generating images, videos, music. They passed exams for us, drafted contracts, analyzed data, and designed products. The entire world has quietly crossed a line. AI was not just background technology anymore, it was a partner. 2023, 2024, and 2025, three years that felt more like 10. New models arrived faster than anyone could keep track of. Each one more capable, more multimodal, and more integrated into the real work than the last one. AI moved from chatbots and browsers to agents running entire workflows, sending out emails, booking meetings, writing code, analyzing logs, and designing marketing campaigns. Companies restructured themselves around AI. Entire roles shifted from doing the work to guiding the AI that does the work. Education, content creation, software development, research, all of them started to bend around this new gravity. And in the middle of all this, a few people, the ones actually training these frontier models, step forward with a bolder claim. They're saying that what we're seeing right now, it's still just a prologue. The main story has not even started yet. AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent in the next one to five years. It's hard to imagine that there won't be some significant job impact there. And my worry is that it'll be broad and it'll be faster than what we've seen with previous technology. Dario Amode is not just a random commentator. He's the CEO and co-founder of Anthropic. This is the company behind Claude, one of the leading AI systems in the world. He doesn't just use these models. He helps design and deploy them at the frontier. He wrote a long detailed essay that's called Machines of Loving Grace. Think of it like a book-length roadmap for the near future of powerful AI. In it, he lays out a timeline that is shockingly aggressive and very specific. Dario talks about a threshold he calls powerful AI, systems that match or exceed the ability of top human experts across multiple fields, biology, computer science, mathematics, engineering. These systems don't just answer questions. They take on multi-day, multi-week tasks, act like autonomous researchers, engineers, and analysts. He writes that this level of powerful AI could arrive as early as 2026. If you extrapolate the curves that we've had so far, right? If, if you say, well, I don't know, we're starting to get to like PhD level and, and last year we were at um, uh, undergraduate level and the year before we were at like the level of a high school student. If you just kind of like eyeball the rate at which these capabilities are increasing, it does make you think 
that will get there by 2026 or 2027. In other words, from the perspective of someone building Frontier AI, 2026 is not just a science fiction year anymore. It's a plausible starting date. In Machines of Love and Grace, Dario explores what will happen in the next 5 to 10 years after that threshold is crossed. He predicts something he calls a compressed 21st century, especially in biology and medicine. AI acting as a tireless virtual scientist, running vast experiments in simulation, accelerating discovery so much that 50 to 100 years of progress in health could be squeezed into a single decade. Diseases that would have taken generations to understand, mapped in years. Personalized medicine designed by AI lab partners working at 100x human speed. And that's just one single domain. He also talks about AI coaches that help you become the best version of yourself, AI planners that reshape economies, and AI systems that are deeply linked into how society runs. Not as science fiction, but as plausible outcomes once these powerful models are on the table. Two years ago, people still argued about whether such systems were even possible. Now, one of the people running a top AI lab is effectively saying, we might get there in 2026. Now let's bring in the second book, AI Predictions for 2026, The Symbiosis Age by Robert Armstrong. Armstrong's angle is different. He's not just talking about capabilities, he's talking about integration. What happens when AI doesn't just sit in a chatbot window, but becomes part of everything we do? He describes 2026 as a defining year, a point where AI becomes deeply integrated into everyday life, business, and society. That's what he calls a symbiosis age. In his point of view, AI is not a separate tool you open when you need it, it's an visible partner and it's everywhere in your operating systems your apps your workplace your home by 2026 armstrong argues we're moving from humans using ai to humans and ai operating as a coupled system your workflows decisions creativity are all co-authored by intelligent systems that understand your preference data and goals from finance to logistics healthcare entertainment he predicts that ai will be making real-time decisions alongside us automating routine work while amplifying human judgment judgment where it counts. Machines of Love and Grace is about what powerful AI can do once it exists. AI predictions for 2026, the symbiosis age, is about what life feels like when AI is integrated everywhere. Both of them are pointing to 2026 as the middle point between the old world and something entirely new. Right now, in 2025, we have large language models that can write code better than most junior developers, generate photorealistic images and increasingly coherent videos, analyze documents, contracts, data, and strategies at scale, act as agents that go out, browse, execute tasks, and report back. We can already see early forms of exactly what these books describe. AI co-pilots for developers, marketers, lawyers, researchers, AI design tools that go from prompt to finished asset, and AI tools that are running experiments experiments, designing proteins, suggesting new drugs. If Dario is right, 2026 could be the year we cross into powerful AI, systems that are not just useful, but that can stand shoulder to shoulder with top human experts across any domain out there. If Armstrong is right, 2026 could be the year where symbiosis becomes the default, where AI will stop being a separate category and simply become part of how reality operates. So what does that feel like day to day? Picture this, you wake up in 2026, your AI AI assistant is not just answering questions, it's running your life like a chief of staff. It has read your calendar, emails, chats, documents, anticipated any problem before they happen, prepared options, plans, draft, and decisions overnight. At work, you're no longer competing with other humans. You're collaborated in hybrid teams. A few people plus a swarm of specialized AI agents that design, code, simulate, test, and negotiate on your behalf. In science and medicine, labs are running AI-driven research loops 24-7. These models propose hypotheses, design experiments, interpret data, iterate, compressing what would have taken entire careers into a few cycles. In creative fields, the bottleneck is no longer what can you make, but what do you want to make? Because anything you can imagine, films, music, games, worlds, can be prototyped by AI collaborators in literal days instead of years. This is the world that these books are pointing toward. And they are not doing it from the sidelines. They are written by people inside of the engine room of AI watching from the shadows. 
So what happens after 2026? Once powerful AI exists, Dario suggests that the next 5 to 10 years could feel like time itself being compressed. The 21st century doesn't unfold over 100 years. It will do it in a decade. That means that entire industries will be reinvented in a few planning cycles. Here's the way I think about it. I use this phrase called the compressed 21st century. The idea would be at the point that we can get the AI systems to this level of power, um, where they're able to work with the best human scientists, could we get 10 times the rate of progress and therefore compress all the medical progress that was gonna happen throughout the entire 21st century in five or 10 years? Economic growth will look like a vertical wall. Political, ethical, and social systems are struggling to keep up with the speed of change. That is why this exact moment, the transition from 2025 to 2026, matters so much. The norms and the guardrails that we're building right now will shape what kind of 2026 we will actually get. These books may be wrong on the exact timing. Predictions are predictions, and reality is messy. But if they are even close, then the window that we're entering in right now, 2025 to 2026, is the last normal era we will ever know. And from here on now, the graph will not just curve gently, it will bend really hard. So what do you do with that? You learn, you adapt, you stop thinking about AI as a threat, and start thinking of it as infrastructure. Just like electricity and the internet, but focus directly directly on cognition. You don't position yourself against it, but with it. Because in 2026, the real divide is not humans versus AI. It's going to be humans without AI versus humans with AI. As the calendar flips from 2025 to 2026, most people will just see a new year. Fireworks, resolutions, the usual. But if you zoom out and you actually listen to the people building these systems, a different picture will emerge. And you're gonna look at 2026 entirely differently. It's gonna be the year where the AI will step onto the main stage, where humans and AI will lock into true symbiosis, and the year where the story will stop being about what AI can do and starts being more about what it is doing right now. So as you're watching this video, remember this, everything up to this moment was just an opening chapter. The real story of AI begins in 2026. Buckle up because things are going to get crazy.